Welcome. I'm Julie Thompson, Executive Director of PAC TV, and today we're hosting a COVID-19 regional forum on mental health amid the pandemic. This virtual panel forum was organized by Representative Kathy Lenatra, who will introduce you to the experts she has secured for today's special. To watch this forum live in Kingston, Plymouth, Plymouth, and Duxbury, visit our Comcast Channel 13 or Verizon 43, or watch online by visiting our streaming channel, pactv.org slash live. To ask questions during this forum, please email them to questions at pactv.org. To replay this forum, simply visit pactv.org slash regional. Welcome, Kathy Lenatra. Thank you, Julie. Great to be here again this Friday. It's a beautiful Friday today. The sun's out. It's starting to feel a little bit like summer. Um, but I'm excited today to honor, have my two guests with me. We're going to talk about anxiety, specifically in the workplace. You know, we've been dealing with lengthy business closures and the prospect of drastic changes in how we're going to operate and the concerns for the safety of our staff and our customers. You know, it's, it's kind of induced a little high anxiety among many small business owners, many employees. So we're going to discuss these topics on how to cope with these strategies, have some strategies to cope with them. And today I would like to welcome Sarah Cloud. She's the Director of Social Work at BID Plymouth and Mary Beth Sheehan, who is the owner of Mindful Medium. So let's start with Sarah, because I understand you have been, you're a busy, busy woman. So I'm so glad that you could join us today. So Thank Sarah, you for having me and for accommodating my schedule. Oh, my pleasure. I'm just so grateful that you could join us. But you must see some anxiety where you are. Yeah, so certainly working at the hospital, there's, I think, a tremendous amount of anxiety. Um, you know, both our, our, our frontline workers, um, as well as our patients and their family members. And I think we're just, you know, kind of all in this together and, and trying to manage and doing the best we can on a daily basis with um, all the uncertainty, which I think is a really, really stressful and anxiety provoking um, place for us all to be in. It definitely is. It, so when I was thinking, you know, they, we talk a lot about anxiety and, I, you know, so a panic attack. So if you were to have a panic attack, sometimes you feel that that's a heart attack. Is there a way that you could just know the difference of that? That's a really great question. And I, I want to be careful with, um, you know, providing any uh, medical advice as a social worker. Um, but I... I think it's really helpful to understand and pay attention and get to make sure that people are, know um, their body and their the signs and symptoms and what's normal for them and what's what's not normal and what feels very very different. Um, you know, there's a tremendous amount of stress and stress and anxiety have a lot of similarities in terms of what it feels like. Um, you know. It, the, uh, you know, disruption to sleep, uneasiness, tension, headaches, sometimes high blood pressure. Um, but, you know, there's a difference between stress and anxiety. Stress is something that happens externally. Um, you know, for example, the pandemic, being laid off, uh, uncertainty is all that stuff that happens externally and that stress. And anxiety is how we internally respond to those stressors. Um, so, you know, this could, so, and it does affect both your emotional state as well as our physical state in terms of having physical symptoms. Um, so it's something that we just have to, I think, monitor very carefully. And I think it's incredibly important um, to continuously take care of yourself. I know people get tired of hearing this and it's really hard to do um, given our current state, but, um, you know, getting enough sleep, staying on um, routine, having structure, getting enough sleep, um, getting, you know, paying attention to nutrition and drinking plenty of water and a lot of other things that we kind of gravitate towards um, to kind of soothe ourselves, particularly in this heightened sense, um, you know, point of being stressed and anxious, such as, you know, some people might have picked up and started smoking cigarettes again when they had, you know, quit many years ago because it's stressful and it's soothing or, I know, you know, people are really tempted to uh, open a bottle of wine at dinner time, or, you know, drink more. There's just so many different vices of food. Food is very, can be very, very comforting. Um, but in the moment, it might feel good. It might be soothing um, the anxiety and giving us a break from the anxiety for a brief period of time. <clears throat> but then it just kind of shoots up, it wears off and it kind of shoots up even higher after. 
Um, so just really kind of all really important things to think about in terms of, you know, in the moment it might feel better and it might help, but it, um, you know, in the long run, even just hours down the road, it's going to come back and, and probably in, in, and intensify even more. Um, so everything kind of in moderation. And I think one of the, a couple of the other really important things you can do to help manage um, our reaction to the stressors. So the anxiety is um, getting enough exercise or any exercise, even as little as 20 minutes a day is really important. doesn't mean you have to go run a marathon or, you know, anything along those lines, you just get out and walk for a little bit will make a huge difference in kind of bringing things um, into perspective, um, you know, and just really kind of enjoying nature. There's so much that we can't control right now. And if we attempt to control it or think that we can control it, I think it's really going to, it's really how the stress, which is the external part that we can't control, really um, enters into our lives and becomes anxiety when we attempt to control something we have no control over. Thank you. Julie, I think you had a question. Yeah, I did. Sarah, since this week's um, concentration is on the workplace and reopening, and, and what does that mean? Um, a lot of people have gotten used to how to handle their uh, stress or their anxiety in the, in the place they're in right now. Now, this whole, either you're going back to work or you're an employer and you're opening up again or whatever the situation where it might change a bit for you, how is that different than the, the reality that you have right now? Now we have a new reality that you also have to now um, adhere to. Yeah, uh, that's a really good point. Um, I think that probably the most important thing that we need to be able to do is to set our expectations and be really aware of what our expectations are. Um, it's not going to look, if you've been out of work and your, your place of employment or your business is reopening, um, it's not going to be the same as when you left it a couple of months ago. So I think um, setting the expectation and being really thoughtful of this is going to be different. I don't know what exactly it's going to look like, and that is okay um, to be uncertain and to live in that place of uncertainty. Um, I think will allow you to be more flexible and less anxious and be able to, I think, adjust a little bit easier um, to returning back to the workplace if that's what's happening this upcoming week or in weeks to come. Um, I think it's also really important um, to uh, really just uh, be kind to people around us and to, uh, whether it be your colleagues, whether it be your managers, the business owners, I think everyone's really trying to figure this out as we go. Um, this is, um, you know, uncharted territory. We've never been in a place like this before. We've certainly been through changes and disruptions and, you know, kind of reinventing ourselves, but nothing to this magnitude, um, this widespread or for this duration um, than we are right now. So I think just to be open-minded, be really conscious of your expectations. Very often we don't even know what they are because we're not tuning into them. Um, and that will really help you set um, kind of the, the mindset between what you hope to happen and what reality is going to be. And hopefully it won't be so vastly different if you're just kind of flexible and open to kind of this new, new adventure. I mean, it, is, it unfortunately doesn't necessarily feel like fun, but it is a new um, adventure and something, you know, that we've never done before. So I think just try to embrace that. Yeah. And that's in terms of the person that's going back to work. In terms of the person that is the employer, you now not only have to worry about making sure that you follow all the guidelines, which aren't completely um, gelled yet. I guess we're going to have more um, advice on this next Tuesday or next Monday. Um, but you also need to worry about what kind of liability do I have for my employees, for the customers. So I would think that adds a whole new level of um anxiety or something like you said, you, you have to just take it slow and uh, make sure you've kind of made a list of all the questions you might need to have answered before you step into that new reality. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's really great advice. Um, you know, it's been really interesting to see how things, obviously the hospital has remained open during this entire time. There's been a tremendous amount of changes and it feels like on a at least in the beginning, the changes were occurring daily. As we learned more, we knew more, we continuously adjust our practices. Um, so it 
you know, even when it's time to reopen, businesses are not going to know how to do it all up front completely right. We'll, we'll continue to get guidance. We'll continue to learn more. As we learn more, we'll, the adjustments will be made. Um, so it, it's just a continuous work in progress. It's nothing set. And I think for some folks, roll really easily with that. And they, they you know, it's really comfortable. And I think some folks um, really want it to be black and white and scheduled and know exactly up front um, know what we're walking into and um, that's just not something that can be promised as much as we really want that to happen and are trying to make that happen it's just it's just not the reality of where we're you know what's happening in this day and age you know the the science is changing we're learning more um, new things are being developed and I think we just have to be patient both with the process uh, with each other and with our with ourselves Mm -hmm. thank you and Kathy so back to you um, to talk about how you can um, educate us from the state level and from the uh, regional level on all these changes that do happen so rapidly. They do happen. Um, Talking about anxiety, I have changes hourly, honestly, hourly. And I don't have, I don't know what the governor is going to say on May 18th. And that is a source of anxiety for my constituents. Um, And they call, they email they text and and they want to know, are they in the first phase? Are they in the second phase Their business? But I honestly don't know. Everything's up in the air. Everything's up in the air for our funding for our schools. So that causes anxiety for our parents, for the teachers in our schools. They're not sure if they're going to come back to a job in September. We still don't even know if we're going to have classes in the schools in September. So I feel that when I walk around, that's I, everyone's feeling some sort of anxiety. And I want to know, Sarah, does that anxiety somewhat manifest? Because um, you had said, you know, try to be kind to everyone. And we had that situation on Cape Cod at the ice cream store. I think a lot of people have seen it on the news. And I, I try to not think that people would be that cruel to a, a younger person working in it. Could anxiety manifest that kind of anger? Uh, it absolutely can. Um, and I think, so I think that gets back to expectations. One is, you know, we've been cooped up for a long time. The weather has been awful. It's been raining a lot. It finally feels like summertime. You know, the weather is getting warmer and, you know, a sign of a new season is, uh, you know, the ice cream shops opening and that's really exciting. And you just kind of go out and expect it to be like last season. And it's not like last season. It's like nothing we've done before. Um, so I think that you might not even be aware that you're thinking it's an automatic what you expect is happening is everything that's happened in the past. And then to get down there and find out that you needed to call your order in a, an hour in advance and that this information had been posted previously or shared and you weren't aware of it, I think it just caused a lot of anger, frustration between you know what you thought was going to happen, your expectations based on previous experience and what the reality is and then it causes all of this negative emotion and then you got to do something with it so um you know unfortunately what some people did with it is that they put it on to the employees that were working um so i having outlets so one being aware and trying to minimize those negative feelings because it feels terrible for us to be experiencing that let alone then expressing it on to somebody else so one being aware and trying to minimize that and stay in a more comfortable place. And then secondly, having outlets for that, whether it be exercising, talking to somebody, um, getting out and enjoying nature. I mean, I think there's a lot of different um, outlets and they're all very personal. People have hobbies. Well, those hobbies are something that a place for them to, as a release and an outlet for uh, feelings and, and, and in turn takes, you know, is good self-care. Yes. Speaking about, you know, exercise and things, I'd like to bring Mary Beth in. So Mary Beth, she's a spirit medium and mindfulness coach. She practices and teaches mindfulness-based stress reduction alongside her energy work to help heal and calm anxieties. Mary Beth coaches many people on the importance of meditation and the thought control, all while turning, tuning into your body's energy. So you must be very busy right now, Mary Beth. (laughs) <laughs> yes, Kathy, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. <clears throat> so can you explain a little bit about, a lot of people don't know what mindfulness is. So sure. can you explain a little bit of what it is? 
Sure. Mindfulness is about staying in your conscious thought, being aware of how your body feels, um, what emotions you are starting to experience, and letting those them come forward for you to process it. Great. And it's good for all people, I would assume. It's good for every age. So I teach mindfulness from age starting at age five all the way through seniors. Um, <clears throat> and it, it works in every aspect of your life. You can use mindfulness. Can you kind of walk us through like a first introduction? Sure. Um, one of the first things that I teach when we get into talking about mindfulness is meditation and how to tune into your body and your body's emotions. Um, how your body's feeling, taking acknowledgement to maybe uh, where in your body you would feel stress. So I call this a body scan. Uh, and this is something that you can do with yourself maybe once or twice a day just to check in. And you would go head to toe, um, giving acknowledgement, taking acknowledgement to all the different parts of your body and acknowledging how it feels. If you feel stressed, a lot of people feel hold. We, you know, Sarah was talking about expectations. We hold expectations in our shoulders and up here. And a lot of times when you're feeling um, a lot of expectations or a lot of stress over expectations, we do feel it up here. We feel the tightness in our neck, the tightness in our shoulders. Uh, a lot of times, a lot of people have an upset stomach, things like that. Yeah, I can see that. I can definitely see that. Um, Julie, did you have a question? Yeah, actually, um, when we're talking about your physical reaction to to how you feel and your stress, we, we've, t we've had a number of, of different um, people on over the last month that talk about your physiological um, reaction to stress and how you can get that knot in your stomach and you don't know what it is. Um, and the whole idea of taking a moment to take a breath and to slow down and just to try to center yourself. So when, when people are going back to work or going back into a workplace as a customer, you not only have to remind yourself of, of staying safe for yourself, but all these, these hints that your body is telling you that you're stressed, how, what advice, and either for Sarah, and both of you could answer this, what, what do you do to actually like take the next step every time, no matter where you're going, how do you kind of prep yourself to make sure that you're okay to take that next step wherever you're going physically and mentally to do it together? Mary Beth, let's start with you. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So I um, will always create an expectation for myself to sort of train my mind. And I, I create a visualization as to how I would like it to go. So before I even step out of the car, to go somewhere or if I'm going into a place where I know I may have anxiety, I do a uh, mental prep and I remind myself that, you know, uh, to have compassion for myself, to take a deep breath when I need to. And my body then gets in the habit of recognizing when anxiety starts. So then I can sort of recognize it and rein myself back in. So it's advice. recognizing yeah. when you're, you're going to start, when you're in a Yeah, part of being mindful is being able to recognize when something doesn't feel right. Uh, and, and really, it's changing the reaction to it and staying in your conscious thought on how you're going to react to that. Hmm. I think in keeping with uh, what Mary Beth said uh, earlier, I find that I the place where I keep a lot of my stress is in my um, lower neck and my shoulders. And I find when I'm in stressful situations, which who knew that it would stress would be stressful to go to the grocery store. It's kind of really odd. Um, but I find that has been pretty anxiety provoking. Um, you know, I find that um, I start to notice a tightness in my shoulders and I need to um, like mentally check in and drop my shoulders um, and take a deep breath. I think one of the most important things we can do anywhere in any situation that I think a lot of people underestimate the power of is taking a couple Breathe. of deep breaths, just pause and take a deep breath or two. And it makes such a tremendous difference. Um, and if you need to leave the situation, then it's really, you're really getting that anxious, then 
you know, be kind to yourself and give yourself a break and, and, and it's okay to, to leave a situation that you're not comfortable within, or you're just not ready to be in. Um, you know, there's, you know, always tomorrow or there's always delivery, there's other uh, avenues. Um, but just be kind and gentle, I think with yourself and be aware of what's going on with you. And the idea of mentally having to pivot. Um, I, I love what you said, Mary Beth, about, um, you kind of visualize where I'm going to go, what I might come up against. So you can kind of prep for what you're what you're going to be in for. the The other thing is is our brains have to now be hyper sensitive and hyper alert to everything around us. Sarah, you said it's funny. You said it's it's stressful to go into the um, the grocery store because you never thought about before. Am I going the right way on the aisle? Yeah. Is somebody too <laughs> close to me? Do they have their mask on properly, or did they lift it up to talk to somebody else? Um, People will look at you and they're afraid, and it's 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 a it's a game changer as far as your mindset goes. And when when you imagine that people who have a difficulty with that anyway, having to to coordinate that into their everyday lives, it's almost overwhelming to people. So, is the watchword to practice it beforehand, to slow down, to take your breaths? to just plot out the next few moments in your life versus trying to look at the whole big thing that's going to happen. Sarah, can we start with you on that one? Yeah, I, I, I think you bring up some really excellent points. I think breaking it down into um, manageable steps won't feel nearly as overwhelming. And I think going in again, like I talked about earlier, you know, returning to work, there's a lot of unknowns, you know, go in the grocery store. There's a lot of unknowns, you know, it's, we may have been familiar with the, the flow and the process before, and now there's those lines on the floor and aisles blocked off and things like that. So I think, you know, going in, not knowing entirely what to expect and being able to adjust to that. So that's the expectation. The expectation is I don't entirely know what this is going to be like, other than it's going to be different than the last time I was at this grocery store. Um, just kind of helps with uh, the expectations and, being able to move through the process and taking it in, you know, kind of small incremental steps as opposed to being entirely kind of overwhelmed with the entire process. Yeah. And Mary Beth, did you want to add to that? That's a good. Great point, Sarah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I think you need to take it moment by moment. So if your goal is to be able to make it down the aisle and make it without anxiety, then you do it aisle by aisle. You know, and I think you can remember if you need to take a step back and leave and maybe try it again on a different day, then that's okay to have compassion and forgiveness for yourself for this is new for everybody. So I think the biggest thing for people is they do have to have some compassion for themselves. I think they put a lot of expectations on themselves as if they're just supposed to roll with the punches. And that's not always the easiest thing. Right. Hey, Kathy, what about with you? Your workplace is really probably your phone and your emails because you're constantly, constantly being asked questions from constituents all the time. So your reality is you have to, you have to pivot continuously. How do you deal with that stress? Because you're taking on the stress of the people that are calling you also. Um, that, that's a good question, Julie. I was going to ask this to Sarah as well after. But I... And constantly take deep breaths. That That is one of the things that I always do. And exercise is very important to me. I was, before we were on air, I had said I hadn't been on my bike for three days and I really feel it. So that's important to me. But I try not to absorb everybody's um, anxiety or my, my role is to find them the resource they need to solve their problem or point them into the direction. And I take that very seriously. So I always try to think of the end result and that they'll feel better. And that makes me feel better. So I'm in a role, which I was going to pivot that question to Sarah. I'm in a role, I have a role, but small business owners have a role too. And they have their employees coming in and they're filled with anxiety and the business owner is as well. But how do you soothe someone that you feel is really suffering from anxiety? Is there a method for soothing them or, or trying to reassure them? Yeah, I, um, it's a really great question. And um, what's really challenging about this day and time is that we want to fix things for folks. 
Um, you know, I know you mentioned that, uh, you know, connecting people with resources, they come to you quite often and, and, and I no doubt that they, that they do. Um, but we can't, we can't always, there isn't always a fix for something, for a situation. Some, there's been some pretty tremendous losses. People find themselves in really difficult situations and um, there isn't necessarily a fix. And coming from that perspective, can, if we're not able to fix somebody that we feel responsible for, we care about, whether it be an employee, whether it be a colleague, we can't fix something for them. It, and that's our expectation is to try to help them in that way. Um, it can feel really terrible. And I think it can take even a greater toll on our, on our mental health. Um, I think understanding that sometimes the fix is that we're simply present and available and listening to them and just being with the person is what the only thing that can we can do at that time. Um, and I think being okay with that and understanding that, you know, that's our limitation. It will make, but, but it does go a long way just to be present, to be a really good listener um, and to be available to them will make a big difference in the long run may not pay their, you know, the rent, the childcare, whatever the immediate issue is, um, but we can be there with them during this process and help soothe their anxiety in that regard. Excellent, excellent. Julie, did you have a question? I'm sorry. Oh no, just um, Sarah, you just you you are always wonderful. I know you're you're on um, Steve's show a lot too at noon for Plymouth, um, and every time you you talk, you yourself are so calm. And just oh, your demeanor you. is so calm that it's really, it's really wonderful. Um, and I just thank you for being on these, these forums. I know you have to leave pretty soon, but did yeah. you have any last questions for Sarah? Or last comments, Or Sarah? last comments, any yeah. Um, I really appreciate that you do these forums. I think these are really important um, conversations to be having. They're maybe not the you know, the sexiest uh, topics, um, but they're just so invaluable. And I think being able to have, talk about it um, and bring it out into the light and know that we're all kind of facing the same um, things together really helps um, reduce the stigma or any shame or anything um, that goes along with these topics. So um, I really appreciate that. And um, I hope that you guys continue doing what you're doing. Thank you, Sarah. I really yeah. enjoy having you on. And like Julie said, you do have such a soothing voice. We had said that before. And I really appreciate you spending this time with us. And I know that you have to go on to your another Zoom, but yeah. <laughs> that reality now, right? Zoom yes. is our reality. So thank, thank you. you. And I will see you Monday at noon. Sounds good. Look forward to it. Have a nice weekend in the meantime. You too. Thank you. So Mary Beth, I know that you have been working with our seniors before this happened. Mm -hmm. And yeah. how, now that we have our seniors are so isolated and they can't get to their their senior centers, what is, what's some advice that they can do at home? Yeah, I think for the seniors, it's tough because a lot of them are at home by themselves. Um, they don't have, you know, huge families around them. So I think it's really important. And one of the things that we did talk about was um, getting their technology up to date so that they can have interactions with people, that they can keep communication going. And also if they have the capabilities of getting outside even if it's with social distance to be able to, you know, interact with somebody or just to get outside and to move your body. I think that's huge for them. I think that's very important too. And in mindfulness, is there a certain amount of time that you need to commit or could it be a small amount of time throughout the day or is it like a session that you would have in the morning or the night? Yeah. That's a good question. I think a lot of people get confused on, you know, how, if, should I, if I'm going to meditate, do I have to meditate for 30 minutes in order for it to work? Mm -hmm. And the answer is no, you can, um, if you've never given yourself any time before, um, a lot of people have a hard time giving time just for themselves. And so I would say start small and um, ch make check-in points throughout the day. So I always get, you know, will give myself five to 10 minutes in the morning uh, just to sort of align myself, think about how I want my day to go, think about, you know, things that I have gratitude for. And I think that's a huge thing, you know, today, definitely in, the, in these times is to figure out 
what you have gratitude for and to really harness that in. Um, <clears throat> and then take the 10 minutes or five minutes if you if you have you can't sit for 10 minutes just to breathe and to you know allow your emotions to come forward. You may find that emotions come forward that you didn't realize. And so um, and then you may find yourself throughout the day if you're getting anxiety throughout the day, you definitely want to have those check-in points to calm yourself down. And I always like to take time at the end of the day to reflect upon my day, to give gratitude for the great things that happened throughout the day, to maybe reference some of the things that I could have done better. Um, and those are all mindful you know, moments you can take throughout the day. And gratitude could be as small as it doesn't have to be this big Absolutely. thing that happened. I'm happy that the sun's out today. I have gratitude that, you know, my kids are healthy. Uh, I have food on my table and things like that. Yeah, because sometimes I think when people are in that dark hole, they have a hard time grasping something they're grateful for. But it is true. I mean, the sun is out today. It's beautiful. And Absolutely. We're lucky. Yeah. Julie, I think you had a question. I do. And it's really, it's probably for both of you. Um, oh. So people that are now thinking, okay, next week is the beginning of a new phase. We have a new slow opening. We have certain places we're going to be able to go that we couldn't go before, even though we're not quite sure what those are yet. Um, that's coming very soon. How do you prep your family members, your children, if you have children, um, to tamper their expectations that a phased opening in any workplace is just that, phased? Because I think a lot of people are like, well, and they'll see on the news, for example, in, in a few other states, they've just completely reopened the bars and they've completely reopened the beaches. And there's tons of people out playing volleyball and having fun and drinking elbow to elbow. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen to us. So mm -hmm. as parents with children or as, you know, spouses, how do you, how do you, how do you train people or teach people or, or give people advice to tamper their expectations about what that's going to mean. Why don't we start actually with Kathy on that one? It is, it is setting expectations. Um, and Sarah had mentioned that as well. And I think you need to keep the bar very low. It's unfortunate that we're all watching the news and we're seeing all these other states that are opened up and they're enjoying the parks and they're sitting side by side and they're drinking at the bars and it all looks great. And you kind of mourn that, you mourn missing that. But it's not going to be that way here. It's not going to be that way in Massachusetts. And I don't think it's going to be that way for a very long time. So it is setting the bar very low. I, between Mary Beth and I, we have a lot of children. <laughs> They're much younger than mine are. But it is, it is setting it. My daughter, Lydia, is missing the gym. I've mentioned that several times before. She's an athlete. She's at the gym 20 hours a week. She's Zooming workouts every day. And that may continue all summer. So I need to be realistic with my children and let them know that this could be what's going to happen. It's not what you're watching on TV. And they all assume I have the magic answer to everything that I know ahead of time, but I really don't. So I'm waiting to see what those phases are going to be as well. But it's we're not putting on a light switch. And it's not all going to be great. Their friends aren't all going to come over and we're going to have a sleepover. So they need to understand that. Yeah, Mayor Beth? Your children are younger, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> my children are young, so we've had a lot of, my husband and I have had a lot of conversations about this because my kids, I live in a neighborhood where there's a ton of little kids mm. and they want to go outside and play every day and they don't understand. Uh, so you're right. We do keep the expectations very low and we are very realistic with this is a day-by-day -day thing. Um, we don't know you know, how this is going to work or when we're going back to school, when you're going to be able to see your friends. Um, but I also try to keep that po a positive view on it. But here's what we can do today. Mm. And we can go do something as a family. And we can go, like yesterday, we took um, a nature walk and we did different activities looking for different things in the woods. And I think it's important for families to take this time off that because, I think when you don't have, when you're looking to see your friends or you're looking for things uh, to just open and you're sitting and waiting, it makes it that much worse.
right. I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. But you know, that's a good point. What this is what we can do. And yeah, I think you have to say that today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Today, this is these are the rules today. We had two mm -hmm. excellent questions that came in from from um, viewers. Um, the first one, and we can actually, you both should probably answer it. We'll start with Mary Beth. But what advice do you give business owners for listening authentically and responding to their employees' concerns? Mary Beth. Yeah, it's. I think for a business owner, it's tough today. But um, I think just coming from a very compassionate standpoint and understanding that, um, you know, keeping your ground on. Um, where you want to be in terms of a whole of as a business in terms of, you know, what the ultimate goal is and just staying in constant communication with them and letting them know that you're supportive of their, of your employees. It's huge. I've talked to so many business owners who, where people are going back to work and they don't know what that's going to look like. So keeping that, keeping them informed and, and what the plan is uh, and how they, how they're going to keep their, team together or keep it um, cohesive to their business. Mm. Kathy? Um, I was a small business owner for many years. And even though I was going through a stressful time or I was um, nervous about paying payroll or something, you know, we all go through our roller coaster owning a small business. What I learned um, at a very young age is to always make my employees feel valued no matter how I was feeling internally, they need to feel valued. And there was this saying that someone said to me that people work harder for praises than raises. And not that I didn't pay well and I would, you know, everybody deserves to be paid well, but you have to understand that they're human beings and what you're providing them provides things for their family. So you really need to talk to them with an open mind um, not get defensive and make them feel valued. Great, great advice. And also, I can speak personally because we have been open the whole time here at PAC TV. Yes. And we have 17, 18 employees, full time employees, basically. And not all of them can be here. Uh, some of them have to be remote. Either it's childcare or it's um, people that have pre existing conditions or family members that do. There's absolutely legitimate reasons why people can or cannot be here, which gives um, a whole new level of having to be, as an employer, having to be able to really listen to each employee and and their their safety has to be your first priority. It just, their health and their safety has to be your first priority. So as an employer, you have to keep up with all the, the legal the legalese of it, like what legally can I and can't I do? What should I do? And then how do I protect all of my staff um, physically? How, you know, what kind of masks do we have and what mm. kind of um, cleaning supplies do we use, etc.? So that is, it's stressful. It absolutely mm -hmm. is stressful. But um, I think the, 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 the person who wrote this in it brings up a really good point that as a business owner, you have to be a psychologist. You have to be mm -hmm. a HR person. You have to be a uh, uh, an insurance agent. You you, you kind of have to play an awful lot of roles, and a lot of people just aren't used to doing that and playing all those roles. So, what advice do we give to deal with that, Mary Beth? You really have anybody? To step up to the plate there, and it, it is. It's a lot of roles, especially as a small business owner, yeah. where you don't have an HR department or. Um, a legal department, you really have to step up and, and try to do all those roles. But I think being honest too, is this is explaining to your employees that this is new to you. We're going to do this together. There's a lot of new rules that we have to go by. But if you know that you're a team and you're in it to win it and you're in it to get this business back on the ground and, and continue to make a revenue that you have to put on multiple hats. Absolutely. Mayor Beth? Yeah, I agree. I agree with Kathy in that. Um, and staying positive and keeping your employees, giving them something to look forward to. And, you know, it's all in perspective. So you could look mm -hmm. at this opening as a rebirth or a, uh, mm -hmm. a new start, and this is how we're going to go forward. So keeping it in a, in a positive direction and letting them feel your support 
and letting them feel your appreciation, I think is going to be huge in going forward with this. Agreed. And the second half of this excellent question that the um, reader, the caller, the emailer gave us was, do you have any de-escalating strategies or communication tips for customers who are upset or uncooperative over the new norms? Great question. Why don't we start with Mary Beth on that one? Yeah. Uh, this question has been asked so many times in so many forums. Um, and I think I, I'm la I'm, I laugh because I've seen it in person too. Uh, I think it's important for people to have compassion for each other, but I also think it's important for businesses to be able to stand their ground and for people to have to understand that. you ha Safety does have to come first. And I honestly think if you're just upfront and honest um, that this is the new norm and this is how it has to work, uh, people do have to get used to that. And, and cause you're not only, you know, at that point when you have a disgruntled customer, other customers are seeing it too. So they are going to look for your reaction. And I think if you take a second to be calm about it, um, and to show compassion and then to, you know, reiterate the fact that maybe things aren't the way you expected them to be, but this is how it has to be for our business to function properly. Right. And, and Kathy and, 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 Keeping in mind, too, that this is not forever. I mean, that's, right. I think that's the other thing right. that people have to remember. This is, this is a phase, and we will eventually, someday, have a different normal. Kathy? I agree. Um, I agree with what Mary Beth said. One of the businesses I owned was a bridal shop, and so de-escalating was a part of my job title. Um, we had a lot of hysterical. Brides are, can be hysterical at times. But one of the things I found is, you're right, Mary Beth, you do have to stand your ground. It is your business, and you do not need to be walked all over. But always speaking at a calm voice, never, never raising your voice is very helpful. And others are looking to see how you're going to react. So I think being kind, even though someone is not being kind to you, can kind of turn someone around. But if it doesn't, you can always ask that person to leave. If it gets to a point where you think it is out of control, then I think it's very appropriate to ask that person. Yeah. Um, and, and, and to piggyback on that also, how we react to other people, um, even if we're not involved, like, for example, in the supermarket, if somebody's too close and you just back up and you just smile and say, I'll, I'll stay my six feet, so don't worry, even if they're the one that's intruding on you, it, it kind of de-escalates their fear and they look at you and, and they actually appreciate that you said something to them. I know I, I try to make eye contact with people and smile at them and say, oh, isn't this fun? Um, <laughs> to try to, because just to kind of everybody knows that we are in this together. And when people come into like into Pack TV, like UPS delivery uh, people come in, um, things like that, we try to um, just kind of, all respect the fact that this is a new normal, we, and we're used to it. So I, I have to give that ca caveat that we're used to doing this. We're used to, if we pass each other in the hallway, one of us will, will actually go into an office so the other one can pass, even though we're wearing masks. So that we're just used to this kind of new way of just, this is how we walk. What else is funny is I've noticed that people don't walk around with their cell phones anymore, <laughs> staring down. People are looking up because you kind of have to. And right. that's not a bad thing, is it? I don't think it's a bad no, thing. No, I don't think it's <laughs> It is hard to see when you're wearing masks all the time, when you're smiling at someone. I was in um, the grocery store last week, and a woman, we came around, we didn't obviously weren't looking at the arrows on the floor, and we came around at the same time, and we both smiled, but we couldn't tell. And the woman said to me, I'm really smiling under this mask. And I said, I am too. So if we could all learn to smile with our eyes, I think that would be better. But, um, you know, humor goes a long way as well. You know, humor goes a long way. Mary Beth, you must have something to say about humor going a long way. <laughs> yeah, I think people need to, you know, take a deep breath, relax a little bit. Uh, because I think what's going to come out of this is when we can go out and, you know, see people again, I think people are going to have a much more uh, better appreciation for that, that more personal interaction. Absolutely. You know? 
And don't you think people have slowed down? I mean, yes, it's I just, think people I think if there's anything good that has come out of this, it has forced people to slow down. Yeah. Um, and I think that's such a great thing. Yeah, that's one of the silver linings. I think in, when we look in the rearview mirror to this time in our lives, that would have been one of the positives, I hope, that came out of this is that we just did that. And the humor thing. I know in my office here at Pack TV, I used to have this beautiful painting up. And now, one whole wall, I just put up the funny things like that I see posted on Facebook. And there's so many hysterically funny things. They're not offensive. They're just funny. And there's nothing funny about COVID-19. But if no. you... If you have to be so serious all day and you have to do your job and, and you have people counting on you and, and whatever you have to do and your kids and your family and everything else, sometimes you just need to look up and laugh. And I, I recommend that to anyone who has to go back to the workplaces. Find some little thing that you can put up that you can look at and it makes you smile during the day. And I'm done. <laughs> that is great. That is great. Actually, to, to piggyback off that, um, in going back and opening up, I think it's important for any business owner who, who works within a team to take those moments, maybe before the day the business opens, to sort of guide their team in maybe an icebreaker or a team building strategy or a, you know, a little mindful circle to be able to figure out, you know, we're in this together, you feel supported, let's have some fun together uh, so that it doesn't have to be so serious. That's excellent advice, Mary Beth. Excellent advice. Kathy, what do you perceive is going to happen as far as next week when you get more, when we all get more um, guidance from the governor about what types of businesses can open and how can people prepare for that? Because since we're not quite sure, it's not quite clearly defined who's going to be able to open and under what circumstances, what do you recommend that business owners do or employees do to kind of try to prep themselves for that? Good question. So on mass.gov, there is actually a protocol what you need to do to prepare to open. And I suggest that all businesses start read that and start enacting that. The businesses that can prove that they can open safely will be the ones that will open first. So you need to see, you need to show that you can keep people six feet apart, that you know you can social distance. Um, in the restaurants, I know that they're going to have to pull out some tables or not be able to seat people next to each other. But you need to just start doing that now and preparing now. So when it does happen and you are allowed to open, you're not waiting another two weeks prepping. You'll be able to hit the gate and, you know, get out there. So I highly recommend that you read through the governor's um, protocol to reopen and start things now. Yeah, and I'll bring that up. Um, it's on our screen right now. Um, the okay. first one just talks about the first, it's a three-page slide, and the first one talks about the four phases of opening, which clearly mm -hmm. we, we don't really have dates on past phase one. Right. The second slide here talks about social guidance. In the middle, it's mandatory safety standards for workplaces, and then sector-specific safety protocols. That would be for, you know, restaurants, for example, or a sector. Mm -hmm. And then what you were just talking about, um, Kathy, is the actual, the four components of a, a safe workplace, social distancing, hygiene, staffing, and then cleaning and disinfecting. So we're all going to have to get used to this if we haven't been doing it or any, any businesses that haven't been open, um, thank you, you can pull this down now, um, are going to have to get used to following those protocols. So if nothing else, it might be good homework to do to start exactly. prepping yourself for knowing you have to do that. Is that good advice? Prepping yourself and prepping your employees so they know what they're walking into. We don't want people walking in blind and expect to work and not know the rules. So looking at those rules, getting those in place, and waiting for the governor's official announcement that you can open, and then you can open safely. Right. Um, and the thing that isn't um, touched upon, of course, on this, because this is more the technical aspect of it, is the whole emotional aspect of it, which is why this... Yeah this form that you're having is so good because it's really hand in hand. You can do all these things that, that they say on the website, but if you're, if you're a crazy person or if you're, you're just going out of your mind because you can't deal with the stress of it, then it's not gonna be effective for anybody. So the mind-body connection really is, is really important in this case especially. I agree, I agree. Oh, so I'm so thankful that Mary Beth could be on with us. 
and talk about mindfulness. And it is, it is true. We, we, if we're able to, or we can learn to take a step back and practice mindfulness, we can go through this at a different, a different way and not be so stressed out all the time. Um, I, you know, I'm guilty of it. I go nonstop. Mary Beth and I are both married to first responders. So we worry about that as well. Um, and we both have children at home. So it is challenging to take a step back, but I think everything that Mary Beth said, it's definitely worth it. And it's worth it for your family, worth it for your employees to take care of yourself. Absolutely. And, and the whole idea that we're not all in the same boat. And that was, I've mentioned it before. I've seen is somebody wrote it on Facebook and it's so true that we're not all in the same boat, even though we're all living in the same reality. Every single person has a different reality that they are living with, whether it's family or work or health or finance, whatever it is, we are not the same in that regard. And and all these rules and regulations that everybody has to follow have to be married with the ability to be able to cope with these rules and regulations. And that's why, Mary Beth, the, your type of advice, what Sarah gives, and you doing this, Kathy, is just so helpful because, like I think you said, you give yourself permission to, to be sad sometimes. Give yourself permission to be confused or angry and, and need to take a step back and need to do some self-care. And um, I, I applaud you, Kathy, for putting these um, these forums together because it really is about self understanding, self care. Because if you don't take care of you, you can't help anybody around you. Agreed, agreed. And thank you for allowing me to do this every Friday. We've had some fantastic guests, some great professionals, and I've learned personally have learned quite a bit. Oh, me too. Um, and meditation. I'm going to yeah. start that in mindfulness. Yeah. Um, I think that's very important. I know my daughter does it, has been doing it with her gym for a couple of years now, and I've noticed a difference in her. Um, I'd like to introduce it to my other children. I think they'd benefit from it greatly. Maybe my husband, too. How about John? Does he practice mindfulness, Mary Beth? He does practice mindfulness, yeah. Yes. We who we practice as a household. Uh, we do. I do meditation with my children before bed at night. Uh, we. I've done... Um, one-on-one -on -one sessions with my kids and in, in breathing so yeah oh, that's great that's great and next next week or next friday when we have another forum with you at 1 30 we love these fridays at 1 30 <laughs> kathy um we'll have a, a whole bunch of new things to talk about because a lot would have happened during the week this weekend is supposed to be fairly nice there'll be lots of people who want to go outside um mm -hmm. there's a lot of new information to read about into if you're going back to work or you're not or you're opening a business to to contemplate make your list decide what you need to do what do you know what don't you know and the bottom line is to keep educated um, keep mm -hmm. positive, take care of yourself. From what I'm listening to, breathe. Recognize when your shoulders are up and they really need to be down. That's an important <laughs> All those thing. kinds of things, I right? I that I think before mine were down. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, I'm like this. I find myself like this and I'm like, okay, stop it. Yeah. Right, Mary Beth, you said that, like, listen to your body. like, <laughs> Or people yeah, that have their fists all the time. I've noticed that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have their, their hands clenched in fists all the time. They don't even know they do it. Um, mm -hmm. so it's, it's all connected. So wow. thank you. Well, I'm looking forward to next week. And I want to thank Mary Beth again and Sarah. This is her second time. She's been amazing. Wow. So thank you, Mary Beth. Any last words for us? Uh, just, you know, stay in the day, take it one day at a time because you, we don't, it's, we're living in this uncontrolled and unpredicted time right now. So I would say, take advantage of the time you have now. Yeah, you know. good advice. Okay, thank you. And Kathy, thank you. And as if you notice, we uh, date stamp these every time we have them so that you know what date this information was actually um, valid. Not that everything on this show is valid all the time because mm -hmm. uh, mindfulness and, and self-care and mental health and taking care of yourself is always important. But our new challenges and our new hurdles that we're going to have to go over will change on a weekly basis. So I look forward to next week. Kathy Lenatra, thank you so much. Um, this is Julie from PAC TV. If you want to watch this again, please visit pactv.org slash regional. All of our regional forums will be here. And Kathy, we look forward to next week very much. Thank you.